What's up YouTube, welcome back. I wanted to give you guys a bit of a life update, talk a little bit about what's on my mind and what my plans are for the channel going forward. And I also wanted to talk a little bit more about my professional background as well. So you guys may have noticed in the past two videos that I have been trying to branch out and test new types of content. And there's a lot of different reasons for this. In the past two years, I put a lot of effort into my cooking content, my carnivore weight loss stuff, made a lot of videos on that and I think I'm hitting a little bit of creator burnout on that side because I realized that there's only so many more things that I can say on this topic and I don't know, my creativity stores are a little bit tapped out. Obviously I'm still passionate about eating healthy and eating just a lower carb way of eating and I am still doing you know, a keto diet for the most part. Um, I have upped my carbs a little bit on certain days, but I'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit. I think I've just recognized for a really long time now that I do need to expand on my topics if I do want to grow the channel and take YouTube more seriously in the long term. And even though I obviously do like to cook, I would say that, you know, it's still somewhat in my comfort zone to be cooking on camera. And in order to grow, you do have to move outside of your comfort zone. So I want to try new things and speak on new topics and I don't know, just kind of see where things go. I think that's what YouTube is all about. It's about, you know, trying out some videos to see whether you like it or not, whether you want to do it more seriously. You really have to try to see whether it's something that you like. Um, and, you know, I've been documenting my journey the whole time from when I started the channel to now. A lot of YouTubers, especially smaller YouTubers, are testing, trying, learning, you know, upgrading their equipment along the way. But now that I'm two years in, I figure that I've pretty much learned everything that I need to know for the most part, figured out everything that I need to figure out. So now it's time to, I guess, buckle down and focus and grow. If you guys watched the last couple of videos, I did mention uh, the fact that I am a chartered professional accountant and I do wanna make some videos just based on this, talking about like career, what it's like to be a CPA, a professional development tips, as well as some personal finance type of topics. And I really deeply debated this for a really long time before kind of taking the plunge to do it. On one hand, I know that this is an area that I genuinely have a lot of real life expertise on that I can definitely speak to. And I know that there's a lot of misconceptions out there about business, money, wealth, and there's just some things that I wanna talk about and I wanna get my message out there. In the past couple of years, I've been able to work on my entrepreneurial and digital marketing skills as well. And I've been able to coach and work with a lot of wonderful people with carnivore and weight loss. And it's brought so much joy to my heart to connect with my clients and to see the looks on their faces when they see positive results, when they lose weight, but also see all of the amazing health benefits. So that for me has been extremely rewarding and I have realized that I do really like coaching. So I'm still thinking of ways about how I can combine my real life professional experiences along with this digital marketing and entrepreneurship and content creation and kind of merge them together um, as a path for it. I hope that makes sense, but that's what I have on my mind and that's what I've been thinking about and I haven't really Really been able to sleep the past month or so just because I've been thinking so much about this. So one idea that I had in addition to personal finance, professional development, and uh, you know counting sort of topics is to make a video series on how to start a YouTube channel. I thought it'd be interesting to share some of the behind the scenes of what it's like to have a YouTube channel, you know, what camera equipment I currently use and what I would recommend for beginners. How do I come up with my YouTube workflow, scripting, ideas, everything in post, how I edit all of my videos, how I research content ideas, SEO, and through this series show you how anyone, literally anyone can pick up a camera, even your iPhone and start recording and start a YouTube channel and potentially earn an income from it if you choose to do so. I've been thinking about some different ways to make this content and I know I have to flex my creative muscles and my creative thinking skills a little bit to see how it would actually play out. I think YouTube and content creation is like pretty much a must nowadays. Um, whether you have an existing business and you want to create content to promote your business to help you generate leads for whatever services you provide or you want to use YouTube to build a personal brand and get your message out there maybe make videos on something that you're interested in or something that um, you know that you could teach other people on. There are so many different use cases for YouTube as a platform and I am really, really pro YouTube in general, especially long form content. So I would love to make at least a couple of videos just showing you the thought process of how I would start a YouTube channel, even if it is from scratch or how I'm planning to make some of my upcoming content and what kind of goes involved behind the scenes. I know some of you guys are wondering, what about your diet and where's Kevin? I am still doing a version of low carb and keto 
that hasn't really changed. I, I think I am a little bit burnt out about talking about diet so much and I do want to take a bit of a break about talking about it but do understand that I haven't really changed the way I eat, still eat what I eat. Kevin hasn't gone anywhere, he's still helping me out with the channel. YouTube is very much and still is for us at least a two-person job and he's the one that's been helping me with all the filming and the lighting and the equipment and the cameras, the lenses, he's really good at that stuff. Me, not so much. That's been a really really steep and difficult learning curve for myself and he's really good at that stuff. So he's kind of supporting me on that side. I think after two years of making content together, he's kind of realized and you know told me for himself that he prefers to be more of a supporter and be more off-screen presence and help me that way and continue to help me with the filming and the lighting and the setup and all that stuff. Whereas I'm more of the face and the driver. It is a little tricky to run a couple channel because it requires a lot of logistical coordination to get us both on camera uh, speaking back and forth at the same time. It's actually not that easy. Uh, I, I don't know if somehow we managed to pull it off for a lot of videos. I think after doing it together for so long, uh, we've both just found what we're both good at and we prefer to just do what we're good at and what we enjoy doing. But he's still around, he's still helping me, he's still supporting me and listen, the next time that Kevin has a good hair day, I'm gonna get him to be on camera to say hello to everyone. I wanted to talk a little bit more today about just the story of how I became an accountant and how you know someone can be a CPA in Canada and you know what my experience was like and whether I recommend it. So in Canada the CPA designation is governed by CPA Canada. Sign of like a government structure where there's like the federal body and then you know every province has its own body. So CPA Ontario has its own body, CPA Quebec has its own body and I'm sure in the states there is a similar structure as well. But regardless of province there are basically three key prerequisites to becoming a chartered professional accountant in Canada. The first prerequisite Requisite is that you need a undergraduate business degree with a specialization in accounting. So that's what I did. I went to UBC, University of British Columbia, graduated from the Sauter School of Business with an accounting degree. And this required me to take all of the core business uh, courses that's a part of the degree along with 10 upper level accounting courses. If you have a business degree and you specialize in something other than accounting, that's okay as well. So if you had a, a business degree and you specialize in finance or you have a business degree and you specialize in human resources, you can still take additional courses with CPA. It's called CPA prep, which is basically the same upper level 10 in-depth accounting courses that I mentioned earlier. The second piece and the most significant piece I would say is that you have to go through the CPA PEP program. So you have to go through a series of six courses, what we call modules in the CPA program, and each of those courses focuses on a different thing. So then the last module is prepping you up for the final three-day exam, also known as the CFE. The CFE is basically like the pinnacle um, of the CPA experience. It's a three-day exam. So it's equivalent to kind of like the final board certification exam that any other like professional career would require. But that one is three days. It requires a lot of studying. A lot of people have a lot of anxieties around this period because you have to wait a couple months for your results. And the third prerequisite is that you need 30 months of work experience at any accredited firm or company um, that will support the experience that you need to become a CPA. So there are some very technical requirements that your work experience or your workplace must be able to provide you in order to hit certain technical competencies. In like CPA jargon words, this is what we call like hitting proficiency in certain levels. Financial reporting, management accounting, taxation, audit and assurance, strategy and governance. And these are graded in levels, level zero, one, and two. And over the course of the 30 months, you have to show like that you're progressively getting better um, at each of those things. I know that's a bit of a mouthful, but that's basically what CPA calls technical competencies. And then CPA also requires you to hit a certain level in terms of enabling competencies. So these are things like your soft skills, problem solving and decision making, critical thinking, communication, both oral and written, as well as teamwork and leadership skills. So these three things, the undergraduate degree, along with the uh, all the exams that you pass and the work experience, the 30 months of work experience combined together will allow you to apply um, into getting your letters. This whole process takes a minimum of two and a half hours at the very least, assuming that you are on schedule um, during the program. And the program does offer exams at different times of the year, so you do have to plan in advance to make sure that you'll like, you know, write the exams at the right time. 
but kind of career paths are available to you if you do have a CPA designation. Well, the first main one is to go through what we call public practice. Public practice just means that you are in a client facing role. So you are serving other clients, whether it's personal clients or corporate clients, majority of them will be corporate clients and you help the company provide services with respect to audit engagements and tax engagements. The end goal of a public practice career is to make a partner at the firm. One of the pros of public practice is that you get a lot of work experience. You grow very, very quickly. You're put in a lot of tough situations. Firms are very rigid during the hiring process. So it does mean that you get to work with a lot of extremely talented and smart people. The cons of public practice is that it's not necessarily the most fun work. It's very, very long hours. It's very gruesome. The actual work itself is not glamorous at all. There's a concept called busy season in public practice, which relates to either audit busy season or tax busy season. Audit busy season is based on when clients have to file their financial. So for publicly traded companies, they usually have to file within 90 days of their year end. So for most companies that have a December 31st year end, they have to file their financials by March 30th. So during the period of January 1st to March 30th, that's what some auditors that work with public clients would say is um, their busy season. Then there's also tax busy season, which in Canada, the corporate filing deadline for taxes is June 30th. So people who work in tax, their busy season will be like April, May, June. So it kind of depends on like what field of work you're in. For me personally, I did actually both. So I had a really long busy season. Like my busy season was like six months because I did audit and tax, but it really depends on the company you work for and um, the type of clients that the company gets. But this is the path that I went through. And then the second path that is pretty common nowadays is going through industry. So industry means that you work for a company in their finance or accounting department. And the end goal of industry is that you eventually become the controller and then the CFO. In industry, there is more work-life balance, so you don't necessarily have to block out like a whole quarter or six months of your year dedicated to like being very busy and working all the time. But there is something called like month end, quarter end, and year end. So there are busier periods more consistently throughout the year. And month end, quarter end, year end basically just means the company is wrapping its books up and producing financials for that period. Industry can also be really rewarding as well. I would say that one of the cons of industry, at least in my experience, is that your experience or any person's experience working in industry ultimately really depends on the company itself. Whereas at the firm or public practice level, the experience is a little bit more congruent throughout. With industry, it really, really depends on the company and the type of experience that they can give you as well as the type of people that you work with um, in the finance department. So it's very company specific. So in order to have a really, really good experience as an articling student in industry, you really have to make sure that you pick the company that you wanna work for uh, pretty closely. So, so that process of interviewing is really important and you need to be interviewing them to the extent that they're interviewing you to make sure that they can give you the experience that you need uh, while you are writing your exams. When I was a hiring manager, I did come across um, other candidates that had to leave their companies because the company that they had started with wasn't really giving them ex the experience that they needed in order to progress in the program. So they eventually had to new find a new job anyways. Now these two paths are definitely not set in stone. Once you have a CPA, there are so many things that you can do with this designation. You can do something like go into management consulting, which is what I did. I worked for a management consultant firm. I got experience consulting with companies on the TSX and the NASDAQ. You can also choose to specialize in certain niche areas and become a consultant in those niche areas. You can be a specialized tax expert at shred claims and basically just consult with various companies on their shred claims. You specialize in a particular section of IFRS, which is a reporting standard uh, and companies will hire you uh, looking for guidance specifically on that standard, especially bigger companies when they need really specific guidance in certain areas and they don't have anyone on the team that can do it. CPAs that have very seasoned careers can also do board work and sit on boards for other public companies. Some CPAs also go out when they start their own practices and they get their own clients. So you can choose to stay in the field and continue to like practice accounting or you can choose to leave the field. So if you're more entrepreneurial nature, you can go out and start a business, any business. I mean, the core of all businesses is that you identify a problem for a target market or a target audience and you provide a solution either through a product or service to that target market. This is also known as product market fit. And then the business would build systems and processes and hire people to scale and ideally build 
a business with enterprise value that is sellable. So as you can tell, being a CPA provides you a career and it provides you with all of these skills that are extremely transferable, which allow you to basically do whatever you want after your CPA. And that's one of the reasons why I was so drawn to this profession in the first place. It's really equipped me with a lot of skills. I think the biggest skills that I developed are like analytical thinking and critical thinking skills and decision making. So the skill set you get from being a CPA in conjunction with the job security of being a CPA, I think is a pretty solid combination. Because I've done work both on the personal side and also the corporate side, I have seen so many different things. On the business side, I've worked with small, medium, large sized businesses, publicly traded, privately held, with companies in almost every single industry imaginable now up to this point. I really, really like to see companies and how they work. I love business and I absolutely love understanding businesses and how they work. And it was always, always, always my dream to start my own business, which is the reason why I went to business school in the first place. The personal side is also really cool as well uh, because I worked with high net worth individuals, like people who had seven, eight figures in net worth. And that was a really eye-opening experience for me as well because you really get to see and understand with your own eyes how wealth is built in today's society. And you really get to understand the taxation system at both the individual level and at the corporate level. And if you're lucky like me, you may even get to learn advanced tax planning skills like partnerships and trusts. And in addition to the skills and experiences and things you get to learn, you also get to meet a lot of really cool people as well. I've definitely come across so many amazing people in my career. Because of being a CPA, I've been able to meet people that are like Forbes 30, under 30 entrepreneurs. I've met and spoken with many CEOs and CFOs of public companies, private companies. I've also got to work alongside and meet so many incredibly, incredibly talented A players. I think that it is a career that really is worth pursuing. And once you are done with it and you've gotten everything that you know that you need from the career and what the career can offer you, then you can go out and do other things. A lot of CPAs that I know, they go do other things. Maybe they eventually end up going back uh, and practicing. Some people go back and forth between industry, public practice, and they go do their own thing. And then they go back, they hop around. It's very similar to other professional careers like investment banking or law where uh, once people have built up a certain amount of experience, they eventually end up going and doing something else. So I have a lot of respect for this designation and what it's given me in this lifetime, um, especially now that I am planning to make more content related to finance. I think there is just so much value that I can provide to the space. I know that there are a lot of extremely, extremely smart and talented people that are in the finance and business niche on YouTube and that does make me a little bit intimidated and to be honest sometimes I watch their content and I feel a little bit inferior because I'm like oh I'm not even like one percent of what they are and what they can say and I can't really let that stop me from you know putting my message out there to the world so I hope you guys like this video today a little bit different vlog style kind of just speaking to the camera I didn't really use like a script or anything today sometimes I feel like when I make videos kind of like the talking direct to camera video where you know I have the full setup it's a little bit more stiff and I don't know, like still kind of struggling with that delivery. Like sometimes I'll like film the videos and like, like I filmed a whole bunch of videos last week and they sounded good when I was saying them. And then I watched them and I was like, oh, these are so like stiff. I don't know what about it. It's like, it's so stiff sounding and it's like scripty style. I don't know. It's just not really me. The delivery just isn't natural to me. I don't know. I didn't really like it. So at the ending note that I want to leave on is that, you know, even for somebody who's been creating content for two years, I still don't always love, you know, what I see once it's recorded. Like sometimes I will film something. I'll be like, oh, I didn't really like that. Like kind of cringe, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's my personality. I'm like kind of insecure about how I come off on camera. I'm still really trying to like get it right, trying to figure out who I am on camera, off camera. I don't know, it's like a whole identity thing. I'm still trying to figure out myself and who I am. Um, and I'm still early on in this journey. I know some people, you know, they start YouTube channels and it's like day one, you know, they got like a perfect video, they got their whole message going and then it's like a unicorn channel that just like takes off. I don't know, for me, I think it's, it's a bit more of a journey. I'm still figuring out who I am in this process, what I like, what I don't like, what I want to talk about, what I don't want to talk about. Um, one thing I've also realized is that even though I can make a video about something, doesn't mean that I should or that I need to. So I'm trying to find a good balance for myself between you know, making content that I know my audience wants to see, making content that I want to make, and then, you know, just making sure that I'm adding enough value through my content. So let me know down in the comments below whether you like this video or not, uh, whether I should continue this style, whether I should go back to my old style. This style of video definitely takes me a lot longer to film. <laughs> like it's been 
like almost four hours of me kind of going back and forth around the room. But I think once I um, get used to it, I'll be a lot faster at it. I think I probably will make that series about starting a new YouTube channel and kind of take you guys on a behind the scenes look of what it's like to film, edit, script, um, my YouTube videos, my whole workflow. And I kind of have an idea of like showing you guys if I had to start a YouTube channel from scratch and it was like, you know, me wanting to start a little a little niche business where I sold products from that channel, how I would go about it. And then maybe I could even make videos for that channel. Anyways, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.